All right, this is Apostle Karen Pina here. Coming on back to talk about your spirit man. Your spirit man is stronger than your body. Your spirit man is stronger than your body. And so what we want to talk about is that we are triune beings, right? We are triune beings. And I think we know that, right? Conceptually. However, when it's time, I just want to put this up here, make sure that you all can hear me. I was on a little earlier and got bumped off of off of here, so we're going to see. So anyway, I think we know that, right, conceptually, that we are triune beings. We know that from a conceptual place. But the reality of what that looks like in many of our lives does not hold true, right? Many of us live primarily from the soul realm, the soulish realm, right? Our soul is the largest entity of our being instead of the other way around, which is that our spirit, right, should be the bigger entity. So I have written the making book, the making book. And in the making book, right on page 73, I talk about this concept. Okay, so here's the diagram. And what you will see is that we have this little teeny tiny dot right here in the middle. This dot is the spirit man. Then we have the body which is this you here, the white you, all right? And then we have this big black outer you, which is the spirit. So in this instance, excuse me, which is the soul. So we have spirit, body, soul. So what we see here is that the soul is the biggest part of this being, right? Whereas the spirit is the smallest and the body, poor old thing, is just kind of trapped here in the middle. And so what this teaches you and I is that if someone is living from soul, they're living based on what they can feel, what they think, what they desire. They're living primarily from what they want, right? So it's all about what they can see with their senses, what they can touch, what they can feel. Right. And this is why you may find people who are sick. Right. And they talk about my this is aching or my that is aching. Right. Because they have not come into the place mm -mm -mm, where their spirit is the larger and stronger aspect of their being. They are living primarily from what they feel, what they think from their soulish realm. OK. And so they have no power, if you will, mm, to combat sickness, infirmity in their body. Because remember, as a man thinketh in his heart, so is he. You think you're sick, you will be sick. And your body only reflects what it is that you're thinking, what you're feeling. All right. So that is not the way that we were created to live. Now I'm going to flip over to page 76, this is how God wants us to live, okay? So it's the same diagram, except it's reversed. Now, this is the soul, this is the body, and the bigger you is your spirit man. Your spirit man, wow. And so now we flip this, the soul is the smallest. Now the body can thrive. I mean, the body can withstand so much from this place because the spirit is in control. Wow, wow, wow. This is how Yeshua was able to withstand the nails in his arms and the crucifixion that he underwent. This is how he was able to pray drops of blood and say, not my will, Father, but your will be done because his spirit man was the larger and stronger entity and not his soul. Wow. And so we are created 
in our Father's image, right? We can do the same thing that we saw Yeshua do when, when, here's the condition, when we come into the place where we develop our spirit man so that it is the long, larger and strongest part of our being, right? Many are not walking in this reality, although it is the truth. Wow. Because they have failed to develop their spirit man. And so their soul is what is driving them, right? And um, not only did this not hold true for Yeshua, it also didn't hold true for Paul. We know that Paul actually had a bite, a snake jump on him and bite him. The scripture calls it a beast in the Amplified. Jumped on him and bit him. And Paul shook it off like that into the fire, right? That was right in front of him. And the scripture says that he walked away and that it wasn't even swollen. Okay, you can find that in Acts 28, 1 through 6. It wasn't even swollen because his spirit man was the larger entity. Wow. Was larger than his soul. And his body responded to what his spirit was telling his body, not his soul. Your spirit man has a mouth. Your spirit man has eyes. Your spirit man has a nose. Your spirit man has ears. Your spirit man has the same parts that you can look and see. And it has a body. Wow, and it has a body. And so what Paul was able to do was to develop his spirit man to the place where, wow, 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 he could withstand the bite of the serpent and come away unscathed, un bruised, come away with no bruises, no swelling, no redness, no nothing. Okay. Stephen also, Apostle Stephen, right? Also, this is in Acts 17, 55 through 56. Acts 17, 55 through 56. He experienced this too, right? This is when they were stoning Stephen for preaching the gospel. And he actually was able to look up into heaven in the middle of being stoned and see the heavens open and look right into the glory realm. Wow. Wow. While being stoned. Why? Because Stephen's spirit was stronger, larger, and bigger than his body. That's why he was able to withstand all of this pain. So are you catching the theme here? When your spirit is bigger than your body, you can withstand pain. You can endure things and you can defy the natural odds. You were created to defy natural law. Wow, 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 wow. You were created to defy natural law. Now, I have seen this in my life personally many, many, many times. Most recently, this happened yesterday to me, right? I was making my husband's lunch and all of a sudden I went to go sit this hot mug and it was a lot of water in this big mug that he takes. I went to go sit it on the counter and guess what happened? As I reached for the island, it actually tipped over, fell on my hand, fell on my leg, all the way down the rest of my body. And so immediately, this is what came out of my spirit. I am not going to bruise. I am not going to have a blister. I am not going to be burned. Wow. Wow, wow, wow. And so while it hurt, right, I took some ice, put the ice pack on it, and I just kept praying over it, kept speaking. I'm not going to have a blister. I'm not going to have a bruise. I am not going to be burned. Here is the hand that this happened to yesterday, and as you can see, it is perfectly fine. All right? Why? Because my spirit man's mouth, the mouth of my spirit, mm, 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 spoke what was going to happen? Not my soul. My soul didn't immediately start thinking, oh, wow, I'm going to be burned. Oh, wow, this is going to leave a bad scar. Oh, wow, 
this is so painful, so forth and so on. You get the picture, right? So I was able to, with the mouth of my spirit man, set in motion the outcome. And many of you, even in prayer, right? You run your mouth over and over and over and over again, talking and talking and talking and talking. When are you going to let your spirit man talk to God? Wow. When are you going to let your spirit man commune? You can talk to God in prayer without your mouth even moving. Again, we're talking about how your spirit man is stronger than your body and how you need to come into the place where you can develop your spirit man to be the largest and strongest entity of your body. Now, while that may seem like something so small, right? The burn in comparison to the crucifixion, the stoning of Stephen and the snake bite. Here's the lesson. If you can do it over the smallest thing, it's the same principle, the same power, the same spiritual dynamic. Hallelujah. You can do it over the bigger things. You've got to start somewhere, right? You've got to start somewhere. So if you don't have the capacity, the capability, the enlargement of your spirit man to be able to conquer pain over a headache, then how can you conquer pain over any serious injury, accident, illness, or even my example of the boiling water, right? Now, here's what I know. You can take authority over accidents. That was an accident. And you can, in advance, bind accidents from happening to you. But you can also, if they do happen, you can take authority over the outcome of the accident versus just falling prey, falling victim to chance, to what may happen. No, you are a believer. You are an apostolic believer. You don't have to fall prey to chance or to what may happen. Wow, you with your mouth can control, determine, dictate the outcome. Psalm 33 and 6 tells us by the word of the Lord, were the heavens made and all of its hosts by the breath of his mouth. Then it tells us in the ninth verse that he spoke it and it was done. He commanded and it stood fast. This is what you can do when your spirit man is the largest entity of your body versus when your soul is living large and is in charge. Okay? So, you have to come into the place where you develop your spirit man. Right? So that you can live from the largest part of your being not the smaller part, right? And you do this in many, many, many ways, okay? In many, many, many ways. How do you do this, right? You do this, you develop your spirit man by extended prayer, extended fasting. You develop your spirit man by praying in the spirit for longer periods of time. You can develop your spirit man by meditating on the word, right? You can develop your spirit man in this manner by obeying everything that he tells you, no matter what you think about it. You can develop your spirit man to come into this place where, the, where it is the largest entity of your being by living from a place of humble and consistent surrender in every area of your life. You live from that place of not my will, Father, but your will be done. These are the ways that you can develop your spirit man so that you can live in the reality that it can defy natural odds, natural laws. The other thing that you can do is you can ask Holy Spirit. Just ask him, Ruach Kodesh, Holy Spirit, help me develop my spirit man. Give me some exercises to help me develop my spiritual sight, develop my spiritual ears, develop all of my being. Wow, 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 wow. You may also prayerfully consider 
asking him to lead you to mentors or lead you to books, right? Because you can be mentored and coached through books. doesn't have to be a person standing right in front of you. You don't have to travel miles around the world to be mentored. You're going to be mentored in your dreams. Salah. That's deep. You can even be mentored in your dreams. That's a whole nother scope for another time. But the point is, ask him to lead you to books where people are living in this way. They have developed their spiritual sight, their spiritual sound, right? They can hear in the spirit. They can see in the spirit. They maybe even travel, right, in the spirit. They can, as we learn, right, even when you look at Ezekiel, he was lifted up. Ezekiel 11, the spirit of the Lord lifted him up and took him from one place to the other, right? So this is what I mean when I say, your body can travel, right? Find people who are having these type of encounters and ask God to show you if they are genuine, meaning the individual and what they're talking about, and if it is authentic. And then if so, right, ask him, you know, to be released to read some of their material. You have to be careful, right, what you're putting into your spirit man, right, when you're delving into these deeper realms of development, right? And if he releases you and says, yes, this is a genuine vessel, this is a true vessel, I want you to read this book, right? Then that's another way that you can start to develop your spirit man so that it becomes enlarged, right? So that you can start living from an enlarged versus a wimpy state. Don't you want to live mm -hmm. from the place where you are a spirit being in reality and not just in theory. Where you can see the power of your spirit man every single day, taking authority, charge, command over situations, in situations, versus situations taking authority, power, and control over you. Mm. your spirit man is stronger than your body. You just have to develop your spirit man in order to walk in this reality. And the making book that I mentioned, perhaps that's something that you might want to explore, right? You can do so by bit.ly, B-I-T dot L-Y slash Glory Resource Center capital G, capital R, capital C, Glory Resource Center. This book will help you come into that place that I talked about of humble surrender in every area of your life where you can see his glory manifested in every area of your life and make sure that your spirit man is now enlarged, right, bigger than your soul. So here are some additional scriptures for you. If you want to see this in action, Ezekiel 37, 2 Kings 5 and 14, Luke 3, 4 through 6. I mentioned Paul, right, in Acts 28, 1 through 6. And the snake bite, Stephen, Acts 17, 55 through 56. And then Eutis was another example. And this is Acts 20, 9, 1 through 10. Excuse me, Acts 20, 1 through 10. And in that story, uh, he was listening to preaching, remember? And he fell out the window and died. And then I believe it was Paul, right, who walked over to him and all he did was embrace him. Mm, 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 mm. He wrapped him up in the grace, the glory, and the anointing that was upon his life. And when he embraced him, life came back into Eutis because Paul's spirit man was the first part of his being that people interacted with. When people interact with you, what's first and foremost? Is it your soul or is it your spirit man? Do they interact with the true you or do they act with the interact with the subpar you? The lower you. The one with the carnal appetites. We all have them. But we have to come into the place where we are taking authority over those things and developing our spirit man so that it can be 
larger than our soul. So again, let me pull this diagram up for you and show you what that looks like. This is the place that you want to start living from where your spirit man is larger than your soul. You want your soul to be this little blip right here. And then your body will gain strength and power to overcome sickness, disease, and even aging. You can, your aging process, there's no miracle serum. The miracle serum is develop your spirit man. That will stop the aging process. Wow. Slow it down with your praise, with your worship. Other ways to develop your spirit man, right? So let me just peek at my notes. Make sure I am telling you everything that Father wants me to tell you, right? As an apostolic believer, believer you can live this way. Yes, you can. Yes, you can. Yes, you can. You were created for this. You were created to defy natural laws. You were created to live above the pack. Not right with the pack. Not at the same level as everybody else. You were created to live from an enlarged place. A wealthy place. In your spirit, man. Way deep down in here. And so you must develop your spirit man, right? In order to live from the reality of this kingdom truth. This is Apostle Karen Pina here, your glory teacher, heavenly success, and ascension specialist, signing out.